Good morning, folks. We've got some space weather, earth weather events, climate news, and a key item for you to visit after the show and look a bit ahead. Let's get started at spaceweathernews.com. Find the last 24 hours on our star with a bright active region, hints of the corona hole trailing it, and a bit of brightness over to the left side incoming. Still no sunspots under those fields and no solar flares, but the solar wind is showing variability this morning as plasma speed drops out and particle density rises, still geomagnetically calm for the time being. You'll recall the IMF and kinetic alpha wave from this coronal hole set an earthquake warning for this time. Rare location 6.0, luckily out to sea near Yemen, started the trend upward yesterday, and that coronal hole is now firmly connected to Earth, and the warning is peaking today and tomorrow. Before moving on, let's quickly look at those coronal holes. They're where there are no looping closed area fields, and here's what it looks like with the IMF actually streaming away from those coronal holes out through the solar system. Up next, let's hit the satellites. Watch the explosion of rainfall yesterday after a relatively cloud-poor morning. Wasn't the case for half the states as the sun headed for the horizon, however, and once it disappeared, the energy began dissipating, as you see there. We're watching a low ridge southeast of Hawaii. System is unlikely to get an eye, but is traveling due south of the island state and could have its arms make landfall. Interesting look at Larson C's utterly crawling pace. It has barely moved. The region where it was has already begun to refreeze. And I'll remind you that every melting or ice break event is a cooling, freshening, and ocean cycle disrupting factor. There's little chance of getting your friends and family to comprehend how self-correcting actions of Earth against the heat are an enormous part of what causes ice ages. But if you decide to try, you'll want to use that Woods Hole article from late last week. Interesting look at CO2 food effect. They recreated super carbon conditions and their hypotheses got turned upside down. Expecting diminished plant nutrition, the leaves actually showed vastly more nutrition than expected, implications for ancient dinosaur population potential, and for a large argument regarding our current situation. Speaking of our situation, I realize that as we have hit the modern cosmic ray maximum this month, many of you might not know what cosmic rays are. Video last night aimed at alleviating that problem, and it's linked below. On the topic of weather and climate, Dr. Tinsley, Eugene Bagashoff, and myself are doing a solar terrestrial physics focus at OTF 2019. I've got the trouble with climate change science and the real path forward. We'd love to see you out here in the desert. Greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 425 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.